Hey everybody, your time is valuable. And Melodyne has a lot of built-in ways to help you work faster and more efficiently. So today we're gonna to go through some of the most crucial features that you need to know about in order to make editing audio a breeze. Right off the bat here, one of the most important things to be able to do is quickly navigate around your audio inside of Melodyne. And so I wanna share a few shortcuts that will really help speed things up for you. So when you first transfer in some audio into Melodyne, this is kind of what it looks like. And if you hold Command and Alt, you can actually get access to the zoom function to reshape the layout of the audio to sort of suit your preferences. So if you drag up and down, you get access to more or fewer octaves. And if you go left and right, you get access to more or fewer bars. Now, my personal favorite is just to drag diagonally and do both at the exact same time. But on top of that, if you hold Command Shift and you double click on a blob that you're interested in getting a closer look at, it will zoom in and center on the blob that you double clicked on. And then to return to the previous zoom setting that you just had, you hold Command Shift once again, and you double click on the background and it will jump right back to where you were. Kind of a nice quick workflow here is to just hold Command Alt and then reshape the layout how you see fit. And then hold Command Shift and just kind of double click on each section that you're interested in working in. You know, you could change tools here, right? And then you just hold Command Shift again and return to where you were. Now, as you're going through the process of pitch correction in a vocal, for example, you might find yourself constantly switching back and forth between the various tools to get it sounding just right. But instead of going up to the toolbar here, every time you wanna to switch tools, shortcuts are gonna be a huge lifesaver here. By default, each of the six tools in the toolbar at the top here are assigned to numbers one through six on your keyboard. And each number corresponds to the order that you see them in. So if I press one, then I get the main tool. If I press two, I get the pitch tool. If I press three, then I get the format tool and so on and so forth. But you'll also notice a little carrot on most of the tools at the top here, which allows you to use important sub tools. So like for example, the pitch modulation tool is nested inside of the pitch tool. So in order to cycle through these, you just press the number of the tool that you're interested in once more. So if I wanna cycle through the pitch sub tools, I just press two multiple times. You can see how it cycles through each of them. But of course you can change any of these to be any key that you want. So if you head to the top left and go to settings and then preferences and then head to the top drop down and you select shortcuts, you can actually use this search bar. Um, let's say we wanted to change the pitch tool and we wanted to assign it to a specific key on our keyboard, we just type in pitch. And that's kind of nice because it shows every single function that has anything to do with pitch inside of Melodyne instead of us having to go through and find exactly what sub menu we need to be in to assign the correct key. So here you can see the pitch tool isn't currently assigned to anything. So if I wanted to assign it to equals, I just type in equals. And now when we press equals, you can see that it's jumped right to the pitch tool for us, which is kind of nice. Now, the other thing that I like about using or assigning shortcuts in Melodyne is that you can actually work from the other direction. So you can type in a letter on your keyboard and see everything that that letter is assigned to in Melodyne currently. So if I typed in the letter S, you can see that it pulls up these three functions all having to do with the letter S so you can see what potentially conflicts with uh, your current workflow. I also recommend that once you're happy with the shortcuts that you've assigned on your keyboard, that you just head to the top right, this little cog here, and you save a profile as you know something that you can remember so that if you need to work on a new computer, you can still carry your workflow with you wherever you go because you can access these files uh, and just put them on a jump drive or whatever. It's, it's pretty handy. While we're on the topic of switching tools, there's a couple of really useful features in Melodyne that help you sort of minimize the amount of tool switching that you need to do in the first place. So let's say you switch between two very specific tools often. Like for me, it would be between the pitch tool and maybe the note separation tool. What you can do is press the letter L and that will actually jump to the last tool that you used. So you can continuously press L and just switch back and forth between those two, which makes things quite a bit faster. Another time saving feature in Melodyne is through a function called separate note as trills. So let's say we held command shift and we wanted to uh, get a little bit more control over this vibrato section. Uh, what we can do is select the vibrato and right click and go to the note separation sort of sub menu and we click separate notes as trills. And you can see that it, it separated out all the peaks and valleys of the vibrato to give us more control over that. But where it saves us some time here is that if I hold command shift and double click and maybe work on this section here, 
we can use that same function to create cuts for things that we want more control over. So th this obviously isn't one note. So if we right click and do the same thing, go to separate notes as trills, now it separates all of it out for us and we don't have to go through and double click like nine times in order to actually you know, get control over the, over the things that we want control over. But of course, I recommend assigning this function to a key somewhere. A lot of times when you're working with audio and Melodyne, you want to batch process notes. So you want to do one thing to a lot of notes at the exact same time to save you the time from having to edit each individual note, right? And there's a lot of cool features in Melodyne that allow you to do that. And one of them is just simply the pitch macro. So if I highlight, uh, let's say this group of notes and I wanted to just tighten up the, the pitch on them a little bit, all I really need to do is go to the pitch macro up here. And the nice thing is that we have access to a slider here. So it's not just like snapping to the grid immediately, but we can actually change how much it's actually doing. And then we can listen and evaluate, you know, what it's actually sounding like before, right? I think we could go forever. Haven't said a thing for hours. Compared to this. I think we could go forever. Haven't said a thing for hours. Another really helpful tool is the leveling macro. And this works really well when you're working with a vocal, for example, that wasn't recorded with much compression and so the input levels can be a little bit inconsistent and then it becomes harder to achieve a consistent result with your compression down the line. So luckily, Melodyne has the perfect tool for us to use to solve this situation. So if we're working with a vocal that sounds a little bit like this. I don't know, you don't know, we don't know it. Getting old, getting old, getting old. You can hear at the beginnings of the phrases, it's a bit jarring, it's a little bit too loud, and then maybe at the beginning and end of the second phrase, it's a little bit too quiet, we're losing a little bit of that detail. So what we can do is select the audio that we want to apply the leveling macro to, and then head up here to this rightmost button at the top, the note leveling macro. And we can start by dragging this right slider down, so we're gonna make the louder notes a little bit quieter, Maybe something like this. And then let's also bring up the quieter notes. Something like this and see how it sounds. I don't know, you don't know, we don't know it. Getting old, getting old, getting old. And now it's a lot more consistent. On the other hand, sometimes you're working with a vocalist who's got a lot of natural sibilance and uh, you know a lot of loud S's and that can be quite distracting to deal with, <laughs> right? But beyond using like a traditional de-esser to help control those, one of the oldest tricks in the audio engineering playbook is to go through actually and clip gain and reduce the volume of each individual S uh, in, the, in the vocal take so that it hits the de-esser and or compressor a little bit uh, more consistently. So the nice thing about using Melodyne is that it already detects where the sibilances are in a vocal take. So if we're working with something like this. So we just highlight our audio here and drag down just a hair. Let's see how this sounds now. You can tell it just takes the bite out of uh, the S's just a little bit. And um, of course you have a sliding scale there so you could choose how heavy you want to reduce the sibilances, but it does it all at once, which is really, really nice and helps you get a more consistent and pleasant result for your vocals. Sometimes we can get a bit stuck in our slower, inefficient workflows, but as you can see, there are a lot of features in Melodyne that are simply designed to make our life easier. So we should just give it the chance.